I want the happiest person in the house to shout the loudest hallelujah. Amen. Uh, as a matter of fact, this is a wonderful convention in which God is going to meet all the needs of his people. Because after this convention, no more sorrow in Jesus' name. We give God all the glory for giving us the privilege to be here today. And I thank the leadership of this church for giving me the invitation to share the word of God with us and to pray with us. I am convinced beyond all reasonable doubt that after today, every one of us will have success stories to tell. If you are one of those people I'm talking to, shout the loudest hallelujah. God bless you, man, in Jesus' name. I saw Papa in the United Kingdom some months ago. He's a very wonderful man of God. I also preach in the church there. <laughs> Amen. Shout hallelujah. The church of God is marching on, and the gate of hell shall never prevail. God bless you. Lift all your right hand and pray this prayer. Father, by the time you'll be distributing your miracle tonight, please don't bypass me. Shall we turn it to prayer right now? In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Our dear Heavenly Father, we bless you tonight because you are the King of Kings. We worship you because time we call upon you, you are sad us. We worship you because you have been performing wonders since this convention started three days ago. Father, we are appreciative of your kindness. We are appreciative of your goodness and we are appreciative of your presence in this wonderful gathering. Father, be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. Father, be magnified in Jesus' name. Amen. This evening, I come against all powers of darkness. I come against all principalities and forces tonight. I come against all satanic elements and I bind them in the name of Jesus. Amen. Let your name be glorified. Thank you, Father, for answering us. In Jesus' wonderful name, I pray. Amen. I want the happiest person in the house to run to seven people. You know, there's difference between running and walking. I didn't say we should walk, but we should run to seven people and announce to them and say, at last, my sister has come. <laughs> My sister has gone. At last, 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 my sister has gone. Amen. So shall it be for you in Jesus' name. What we have just done is declaration. And where there is declaration, there will be confirmation. Before we leave here tonight, there is going to be confirmation in Jesus. Have your seat. And I wish you a happy convention. In Jesus' name. Uh, the topic the Lord gave unto me to speak upon tonight is a very simple one. 
very very simple which we are taking from the book of psalm 30 psalm 30 uh, verse 5b psalm 30 verse 5 says first is anger and the other but a moment in his favor is weeping me a deal for the night but joy comments in the morning the topic says weeping may endure for the night weeping may endure for the night brethren as a matter of fact no human being want to be a weeper nobody wants to be a weeper nobody wants to be weeping i'm sure you don't want to be weeping because weeping is never part, part of the packages of God for our lives. It is when you are sorrowful that you weep. You can only share, shed tears, the tears of joy, when you are happy or overjoyous. People will call that one tears of joy. But in a situation where somebody is weeping, it's a sign of sorrow. And what the Bible is saying here in concrete term is this. This weeping may deal for the night. That is to say, under normal condition, under ideal situation, weeping should not be more than one day. Any weeping that is more than one day must have been hijacked by demons. God does not tolerate every day weeping but one day weeping <laughs> because our god is such a wicked god i don't know that thing that makes you weep every day tonight is the expiring date of that problem in jesus name i don't know that thing that makes you to be sorrowful on a daily basis all i know is that after today that sorrow is over in the name of jesus christ for a long time you have been weeping for a long time you have been crying and people have been coming to console you and say sorry after tonight nobody will say sorrow to you anymore nobody will say sorry to you anymore in the name of jesus christ let that person shout hallelujah let that person shout hallelujah that is to say, weeping should not be more than one day. That is to say, this evening, this night, is the end of weeping your life. By the time you enter tomorrow, you enter the season of joy. That's why the Bible says, weeping may endure for the night. But joy comes in the morning. Like I said earlier, God does not embrace every day weeping, but one day weeping. After today, we don't longer weep in Jesus' name. Let us quickly go to the book of Second Kings, chapter four, which I read from verse one. Second Kings, chapter four, which I read from verse one. Now there cried a certain woman of the wives of the sons of the prophets unto Elisha, saying, "That Saba, my husband, is dead, and thou knowest that." The Sabbath did fear the Lord, and the creditors is come to take unto him my two sons to be bound men. Once upon a time, a prophet assisted on the service of this heart. But very unfortunate, he died a pauper, he died a creditor, and immediately he died, his creditor came to take away their two sons. And when the madam heard about this, he, she cried. But that was the last time she cried on the service of the earth. Because God intervened in her fears. And after today, those of you who have been crying because of one reason or the other, because of one thing or the other, after today, that cry will stop in your life in Jesus' name. When, this woman, uh, when the husband of this woman died, there is no record that she cried. But when they wanted to take away her two sons, she cried. Because it was too much on her in the morning she lost her husband in the evening they wanted to take away her two sons 
and that is why she ah, ah, am i the only one on the surface of the earth why all these calamities my husband died in the morning this evening they want to take away my two sons who would have served as consolation to me why me all the time why me all the time then she began to cry but she did not just cry and stop there or I released the children. She ran to the prophet of God, prophet Elisha, and told her, said, you know that my husband feared the Lord. Truly, this man feared God. Even the man of God confirmed it, that she, he feared the Lord. But very unfortunate, he died like nobody. Uh, many of us may begin to wonder, why is it that this man died that way? Ah, somebody who feared the Lord. Yes, it's a very good question. It is possible when you are under a curse and you cannot pray through. Because there is no record that this man prayed against this situation. Maybe it's one of those Christians who believe that when, when we get to heaven, we enjoy every good thing. And just continue to live his life like that. Brethren, we must do everything possible in God to overcome sorrow. Because sorrow is ever part of us. Everything possible in God must be done to checkmate sorrow effectively. After today, the Almighty God will do everything possible to overcome sorrow for you in Jesus' name. Yeah. She cried around to the man of God. And another reason, probably uh, this man did not know his right in the Lord. When you don't know your right in the Lord, the enemies are ready to shoot you. They are ready to rob you. Spiritual robbers are out everywhere to rob the children of God of their rights. If you don't know your right in the Lord, you can suffer like a criminal. <laughs> Despite the fact that you are a child of God. That's why you must know your right in the Lord. You must be able to resist the devil. With every power given unto you by the Almighty God. Because you are born again in order to shine. You are born again in order to reign again. Every attempt of the enemy to keep you in sorrow perpetually shall be thwarted today in Jesus' name. Shout him a very well, somebody. And uh, the man of God said, verse 2, And Elijah said unto her, What shall I do for thee? Tell me. What had thou in the house? And she said, The handmaid had not anything in the house, save a pot of oil. <laughs> the, the situation was so critical to the extent that the only thing the man left behind was a pot of oil. No more, no less. And uh, if the children, the two kids, and the madam were to drink this oil for one or two days, I think they would be able to consume all. <laughs> that was the only thing that the prophet left behind for his family whereas my bible tells me that a good man leave inheritance for children children if you can't leave inheritance for children children you don't leave poverty for them you don't leave sorrow for them you don't leave death for them because you are a child of god our god is not a god of poverty is a god of breakthrough is a god of success because after this conversion the aim of this conversion is that after this conversion you begin to rise and shine that is the objective of this convention am i talking somebody because after this convention after this convention you must be able to rise and shine every power that suffers in negation to shine in your life shall die today in the name of jesus christ shout hallelujah he said the only thing my husband left behind was a pot of oil and i don't know how long that will take them in life before they die it was as bad as that but a miracle happened because all that she wanted was a miracle to pay the the debt and they got the miracle that day. Like the way you are going to get your miracle before you leave here today. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Verse 3 now says, Then he said, Go, 
Borrow the vessels abroad of all the neighbors. Even empty vessels. Borrow not a few. The man of God instructed her to go out now and borrow empty vessels from all their neighbors. From everyone around. Go and borrow empty vessels. Don't borrow a few. If it were you, you would like to look at it critically as, ah, why should I be going from house to house to borrow empty vessels? I don't need empty vessels for anything. All I need is how to pay this debt. I want this debt to be paid. That's all I need. But this woman did not query what the man of God said. Go and borrow empty vessels. Brethren, many a times the way of God looks like foolishness. When you look at it critically, I begin to wonder, ah, how, what can this do? How can, you know, I'm holding some money. They want to take away my keys. And now I was instructed to go and borrow empty vessels. What is the correlation between empty vessels and the payment of this debt? <laughs> what is the correlation? Man of God said, go and borrow empty vessels. Don't borrow a few. Borrow so many empty vessels. Shout hallelujah, somebody. Brethren, that was the last time she borrowed on the surface of the earth. Uh, first of all, Joe, I was saying something at our general convention in August about borrowing concerning myself. What did I say? In the open, in the congregation of over 100,000 people. I said it openly. I said, in my life, I've never borrowed. Since I was born into the service of this earth, I just woke up one day and I look at it. I said, ah, I've never borrowed in life. I have never borrowed, either from bank or from anywhere. God is not doing it without stress. Beginning from this evening, God will begin to supply the needs of somebody without stress. I want that person to shout hallelujah. But that was the last time that this woman borrowed. Probably you are here, you rely on borrowing, you borrow almost everything. After today, that lifestyle is over. In the name of Jesus Christ. He said, go and borrow. Empty verses, borrow not a few. And when thou art come in, thou shalt shut the door upon thee and upon thy sons, and shall pour out into all those verses, and thou shalt set aside that which is full. The man of God instructed this woman, when you borrow the empty vessel, pack them into your room. Shut the door upon yourself and upon your two kids. Don't exclude them from this sin. Don't exclude them. Shut the door upon yourself. You know, if we are to obey some people, they will shut the door upon themselves, but they will leave their children out of their sin. <laughs> even some will even forget that their children should be included. Shut the door upon yourself. This is instruction. Instruction is very, very important in life. When you keep to it, you will enjoy your breakthrough. Especially when a man of God is, has given you some instructions to carry out. Or when God has spoken to you to go and do so, 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 one thing or the other. I am sure that after today, somebody is here, you will sing a new song. Amen. Amen. Then where the verses you pour out into these empty verses and you set aside those that are full. So she went from him and shut the door upon her and upon her two sons and brought, who brought the verses to her and she poured out and it came to pass where the verses were full that she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel and he said unto her there is no, not a vessel more. And the hoyer stayed. Brethren, this hoyer refused to stay until there was no more empty vessel. Until all the vessels have been exhausted. It was then that the hoyer stayed. There is somebody here tonight, beginning from today. The blessing, the miracle of supply shall never cease in your family until you open.